Hey everybody, it is the springtime and lots is going on in the spring right now. It rained a lot last night and everything's green and it's beautiful out here in the woods. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a spotted salamander, but they're part of the mole salamander kind, which means they spend a lot of time under the ground. And there are these places called vernal pools, which are kind of like shallow ponds in the forest. And the first warm rainy night in the springtime triggers the great salamander migration. And all the salamanders come out of the earth and go to the vernal pool to lay eggs. So I was working with these herpetologists, those are people who study reptiles and amphibians, and we went out on that first warm rainy night in the springtime. And you'll never guess how many we found. 500 salamanders. It was awesome, it was so cool. And that was my crazy salamander experience. Now, we are gonna talk a little bit more of that later, and we're gonna go visit a vernal pool and see a wood duck up close. So I hope you're ready for an adventure. Let's go. As a wildlife filmmaker and educator, I've spent most of my life exploring God's creation, from climbing up mountains, to canoeing through wetlands, and hiking into forests. My love for God's creation has taken me on many outdoor adventures. In each episode, you'll come along with me as we explore this great big world God has made. I hope you're ready for an adventure. I'm Peter Schremer, and this is Hike and See. Well, it's springtime, and that means that things are happening in nature everywhere. Birds are migrating back north to make nests and lay eggs, and one of the most beautiful birds around right now are the wood ducks. Now, wood ducks live all across North America, and in the southeastern part of the United States, they can live year-round, but for those that live up here in Michigan and even further north in Canada, they migrate back and forth with the seasons. So the wood ducks are back, and the male wood ducks, the boys, they look exceptionally beautiful in the spring. God has painted them with this gorgeous coloration that they have during the breeding season, which is right now. Later on in the year, they'll molt, which means they lose some of their feathers and change their color, and they'll look a little more uh, drab or dull. But right now, they look stunning. And we get the opportunity to see a male wood duck up close at the Howell Nature Center, and that's where we're going right now. So we are here with Evan Lure here at the Howell Nature Center. So Evan, tell us a little bit about this very chatty wood duck and why he's here at the Howell Nature Center. So this feathered friend is Bonsai the wood duck and he is an imprint. So a lot of our animals have physical injuries, but a few of them just have mental injuries. And so for Bonsai, what that looks like is when he was a duckling, he was actually taken care of by people instead of his own species. And for birds, that means that they actually think that they are a person. So while this is abnormal behavior, if you were to see a wood duck out in the wild, he actually wants to be a part of our conversation just about as much as he would if it were a wild wood duck that he should normally be communicating with. Gotcha. Well, so what is his role here at the Howell Nature Center? Bob is one of our animal ambassadors, which gives him the opportunity to teach others about wood ducks out in uh, other places that for folks that can't make it to the Nature Center. And that involves a little bit of training. So we set up a table much like this, and he stands out in front of the audience and will actually chat to the audience a little while the whole time I'm talking about him, much like he's doing right now. Um, and then to make sure that it is a positive experience, we use food-based rewards for him. So I've got mealworms that would be a natural part of his diet um, out in the wild. So they, he gets pretty excited about them. As you can see, that he is begging for more. <laughs> Well, and speaking of food, what kind of care does Bonsai need here at the Howell Nature Center? We've got the two types of things that they, we really focus on. One is his environmental side of things. So his exhibit has different things that he would need. He's got a nice pond that he can swim in. And it's really important that he has access to water so that he can waterproof all of his feathers and do what a duck should do naturally. And if he didn't, he wouldn't be able to float the way that he does. Now, if we look at what he's actually standing on, he is standing on wood and tree branches, basically, which is pretty abnormal for a dabbling duck. 
But if we take a closer look at his toenails, we would see that he actually has nails on the end of those. And so he can use those to grip onto branches. So in his exhibit, we've got nice uh, ramps and other branches for him to stand on. And then for his diet, I was just feeding him mealworms, but those are not a normal part of his diet. Those are a treat because in the wild, they would be eating about 80% vegetable matter. So things like duckweed that they would find that they could dabble off the top or things like other greens like dandelions. So while the mealworms are very exciting for him, they're more of a treat than they are a regular diet item. So I've already mentioned that male wood ducks are brightly colored in the springtime, and he seems to be showing off a lot today. Can you talk a little bit about that? So for bonsai, those bright colors serve a couple of different purposes. He is able to show off that he is getting proper diet because he is now able to produce those colors. And it also shows that he is really good at surviving because when you're that brightly colored, it's really easy for predators to spot you. And if you're good at still avoiding the predators, even if you're easy to see, then it shows that you'd make a good dad, that your genes are worth passing on to the next generation. Uh, so as we've been watching him, he's been doing different behaviors. So in addition to his colors, that head bobbing and that crest raising are also ways that he really just highlights all of the different things that he's got going on and all of his different colors. So wood ducks have unique nesting behavior with their young. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Wood ducks, like we talked about earlier, they spend a lot of time in trees, so they have those claws that let them grip, and that actually lets them have their nests further up in trees, which keep them safer from predators, and they'll use hollows that are created by woodpeckers or that naturally occur in trees, and those hollows can be up to 60 feet in the air. And when wood ducks are born, they don't look like bonsai. They don't have those nice feathers that are able to help them fly. They're meant to be downy and fluffy and keep themselves warm, which means that it's a pretty interesting day when they have to jump. And so as they're jumping, they are, they're okay. They just kind of fall slowly. Their bodies are able to catch the air a little bit and they're light enough that when they hit the ground, they really just bounce and then head on their way. So do you get wood duck ducklings here at the wildlife clinic? We get wood duck ducklings, we have mallards, mergansers, uh, goslings. We get a whole bunch of different waterfowl into our clinic. Now, wood ducks are often like other ducklings where they're very easily impressionable. And so as they are trying to find their way to mom, and mom's really good about making sure that they find her, uh, they need other ducklings to learn how to be ducklings so that they don't end up like bonsai because bonsai doesn't have the survival skills needed to survive out in the wild, so it's really important that they grow up with other like species. So even if we don't have other wood ducks, we still want to make sure that they're with the other ducklings that are in our clinic, so that they have the best chance of survival before we send them back out into the wild. Well, that was a ton of fun. You know, wood ducks out in the wild don't let you get that close. They're usually shy and elusive and stay out there a little further away from you. But bonsai being an education bird allowed us that up close and personal experience, which I love. One of the reasons I love going to the Howell Nature Center is that it reminds me of our calling that God has for us in creation, even our, the command he's given us, which is to care for his creation. You know, because we live in a world where sin has entered, bad things happen. Animals get sick, animals get injured, baby animals can get orphaned, but that's where we come in, fulfilling the role that God has called us to, which is to care for his creation, to manage everything that he's made. And, you know, it's a big job. It's a big job to take care of God's natural world, but it's a very rewarding one. Wood ducks are cavity nesters. Now, if you have a cavity in your tooth, that's not a good thing. It means you have a hole in your tooth. But if there's a cavity in a tree, that means there's a hole in a tree, and that can be a good thing for wildlife. There are lots of animals that like to live in those holes, like wood ducks. But there are other types of birds that enjoy it too, like bluebirds, wrens, and chickadees. 
and sometimes they don't live in a hole in a tree, they live in a birdhouse or a nest box like this one here. Now, a really fun thing to do in the spring is to make a birdhouse of your own. And making one is a lot of fun because you can put it all together, you can make it the way you want to, and it becomes then a home for birds in your own backyard. So here is Izzy and Sarah to show you one way to do it. Well, that looked like a lot of fun. Maybe you can make a birdhouse for your backyard. But right now, we are gonna go on a hike to a habitat that wood ducks love, a forested wetland. But we gotta make sure that we're bringing the right stuff with us when we go. Always take a backpack with you when you go hiking. I always like to take a pair of binoculars for spotting wildlife, a Bible for spending some time in God's word, and some water. You gotta stay hydrated. When your water's half gone, your hike's half over. And last but not least, make sure that you're dressing properly with the right footwear. Wear some hiking shoes to protect your feet. All right, let's go. Something we don't often think about is that God made us to be explorers. This great, big, beautiful world that he's made showcases God's glory, but he also made it for us to explore, to discover, to have adventures. As his sons and daughters, he wants to give us good things. And he gave us this beautiful place so that we have a playground to experience and to connect with him. So next time you go outside on a hike, think about the fact that God made you as an explorer. So this is a vernal pool. And I've been coming to this exact vernal pool since I was six years old. And the same beautiful things happen every single year. The spring rains come down and fill this place with water. And it becomes a water source for animals to drink from. It becomes a place where wood ducks can come and swim around. And it becomes a safe place for little tiny baby animals called larvae to grow up. And so there's some distinct features that make vernal pools special. The word vernal means spring. If you've ever heard of the vernal equinox, that's when spring officially begins at the end of March. And so vernal means this is a spring wetland habitat. It fills with water in the spring, and then by the end of summer or in the, in the coming year, it will dry up at some point. So it's a temporary body of water. It's a temporary wetland, and that's a key feature. Another key feature of a vernal pool is it's in the forest. It's surrounded by trees. Another one is that it's isolated. It's not connected to a creek or a river. It's by itself. Another feature is that it's small and it's shallow, and there aren't any fish, and so there are very few predators to eat the little tiny insects and larvae of other animals that are growing up here. Now, this place is exactly where the spotted salamanders come in the springtime. And I was here a week ago and I spotted some salamander eggs. So I think we can find them again if we just come on over here. Oh, there it is, right down there. That gelatinous mass is a bunch of salamander eggs. And there are others around here in the vernal pool. These eggs are actually spotted salamander eggs. And spotted salamanders were created with other land animals and creatures that creep along the earth on day number six and are part of the mole salamander kind. Now being a mole salamander, these spotted salamanders like to spend a lot of their time under the ground like a mole. 
But on the first warm, rainy night in the springtime, they come out of the ground and descend upon the vernal pool. You have to stay up late to see this special springtime event happen. Spotted salamanders are secretive and usually only come out at night. When they come to the vernal pool to lay eggs, they all come out at the same time, sometimes for just a night or two when the conditions are just right. Male salamanders try to get the attention of the females by pushing them with their noses and wriggling their tails. Females can lay up to around 200 eggs on one of these special nights. Though spotted salamanders grow to be about seven inches long, they hide by swimming under the leaves in the water. We collected around 500 salamanders that night, but some locations can have even more. Studying God's creatures is fun and important because it helps us understand more about how to care for what God has made. I love Salamander Night on the first warm rainy evening of the year because it means that springtime has finally arrived. You know, I really love spending time in God's Word out here in nature, especially on a beautiful spring evening like this. I was just reading in James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Now, what that is saying is that every beautiful and wonderful and good gift in our lives is from our Heavenly Father, kind of like the vernal pool. It's a wonderful source of life for so many creatures in the forest. But being part of this world, it's temporary. It's not gonna stay that way forever. It's gonna change, it's gonna dry up. And we live in a world where things are temporary, where things change around us all the time. But what James is saying here in this passage is that even though we live in a world of change, God does not change. He is constant and he's there for us through everything that we go through, no matter what. And that is a powerful promise. Well, I hope you enjoyed our spring adventure, checking out a vernal pool, learning more about salamanders and wood ducks, building a birdhouse. You know, there's so much to see and do in the springtime. I want you to pick one cool spring activity that you're gonna do to help celebrate all that's going on in God's world right now. Go on a hike in a forest, build a birdhouse, go bird watching. What animals live in your area? There are so many things that you can pick from. So now it's your turn to hike out into God's creation and seek our loving creator. I'll see you next time 